Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. So we are now taking things to a new level, and that is we are moving towards the more complicated stuff. So we've learned how to find out the resultant. We have learned how to resolve forces. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mix the two. That is, we're going to learn how to find the resultant by resolving forces. And if you remember earlier, I said that there are three categories of questions. So we will start off with the first category. And that is when you have two forces acting away from a certain point and you have to find the resultant or in some cases resultant as well as the direction like we have over here. Now, there are two methods that we can use to solve questions like these. One is by resolving forces and the other is something called the parallelogram rule. Okay, And at the end of uh, explaining both the methods, I will ask you which method you find easier. I kind of know the answer to that already, but still to keep things interesting, I want to hear from you guys, which method you would prefer. Let's read the question first before we do anything else. Two forces P and Q act on a particle as shown. P has a magnitude of 10 Newtons and Q has a magnitude of eight Newtons. So this arrow is representing a 10 Newton force and this arrow is representing the eight Newton force. Work out the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. Okay. So as I mentioned that this is method one and that is through resolving forces. So one thing to keep in mind, both these forces will have a horizontal and a vertical component. So because these forces are acting at an angle, we need to first break them down into horizontal and vertical components. So first thing we're going to do is, let's start by resolving P. So here is P, which is acting at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. So let me draw the force here. So here is the force. And like I said, it's acting at an angle which is 45 degrees to the horizontal. So there will be an X component and there will be a Y component. Okay, so let's start with P. So here we have P. So we're gonna represent P by this arrow right here. And because it, like I said, it's acting at an angle, we need to break it down into horizontal and vertical components. So let's say the horizontal component is represented by green the vertical component is represented by blue. And what's the angle? Let's write that down. It is 45 degrees and P is of 10 Newtons. Okay, now, if you remember the shortcut that I explained earlier, the X component will be equal to 10 cos 45. We'll have the X component, the horizontal component, not necessarily the horizontal component, but the adjacent component will have cos in it and the opposite component, which in this case is Y will be 10 sine 45, okay? And they will both be positive because they're both acting rightwards, so, and they're both acting rightwards and upwards, so they'll both be positive, okay? So that's P. Now, next thing, let's, uh, next force is Q. So let's talk about that. Q is acting downwards 30 degrees to the horizontal. So this force also, we need to break down into X and Y components. So here is the X component and in blue is, I'm going to, in, in blue, I'm going to make the Y component. So there you go. Now let's fill up this information here. This is eight Newtons, all right? The angle that we have is 30 degrees. Okay, so let's start with, this time, let's start with the X component, which by the way, is going to be the same as before, and that is eight, cos 30. And when I say the same as before, not exactly the same in value, but the same trigonometric function. And this will also be positive because it's acting towards the right. The y component, however, will be 8 sine 30. But because it's acting downwards, that means it's going to be negative. So we'll just put a minus sign over here. Okay. Now, the whole purpose of doing this is so that we can incorporate these two forces in a right angle triangle, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're gonna find out the resultant in the X direction and we're gonna find out the resultant in the Y direction. How do we do that? You should remember it from prior knowledge. If I wanna find out the resultant in the X direction, I will take all the forces acting rightwards and from it subtract all the forces acting leftwards. Now here, there are no forces acting leftwards. So that means the resultant in the X direction is going to be 10 cos 45, plus eight cos 30, okay? Now let's talk about the resultant in the y direction, which is going to be all the forces acting upwards minus all the forces acting downwards. So all the forces acting upwards over here are 10 sine 45 minus the force that's acting downwards, which is simply eight 
sine 30. Okay. Now at this point, when you don't know exactly whether the overall value is positive or negative, I suggest something called a sneak peek. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the overall value of the resultant in the y direction. Why? I'll explain in a minute. So 10 sine 45 minus 8 sine 30. So we're looking at minus 4 plus 5 under root 2, which is positive 3.07. So it's positive. Okay, so this is also positive and this is also positive. Now, why am I interested in doing, uh, in finding out whether it's positive or negative in the first place? Because like I said, we need to incorporate these forces in a 90 degree triangle. So here is the resultant in the x direction. Here is the resultant in the y direction. They're both rightwards and upwards. And the resultant, the actual resultant, you can say the grand resultant, will be the hypotenuse. So this right here is actually what we are after. So this is our resultant. Now, you can probably see what I'm going to use over here. And yes, I'm going to use Pythagoras theorem. So r squared is equals to rx squared plus ry squared, OK? Now here, I will suggest that you use the exact value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this down as it is in the calculator, square it, then in it, add this as it is in the calculator, square it, and then take the square root. So that way, what will happen is I will be uh, saved from something called premature approximation, which means that you round off your answer before you get to the final answer, which is why you might have observed that I've kept everything in terms of sine and cos, OK? And that's the reason behind that. So let's do that. This is going to take a while. So 10 cos. 45 plus 8 cos 30. Make sure you place the brackets correctly. Square plus 10 sine 45. Close the bracket. Plus, uh, minus, sorry, 8 sine 30. Close the bracket of the angle. Then bracket of the entire expression. Square it. So I'm looking at 205.41 something. Let's take the square root of that. So the resultant is equals to 4.3 newtons. And that is the correct answer. But remember. It's not the end. We still have to find out the direction. If you go back to the question, that's what it said. Work out the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. So let's find out the direction. Now, direction is usually stated from the horizontal, above the horizontal or below the horizontal. So this is the angle that we're going to find. So that means what we can use is simply tan. So tan theta is equals to opposite upon adjacent, which in this case is going to be ry over Rx. So again, use your calculator so that you don't have to uh, round anything off. So in order to find out theta, I'll simply take tan inverse of uh, this, the opposite, divide by the adjacent. So tan inverse of, so first of all, let's do 10 sine. Again, just write it as it is, the way that you see it in your calculator, so you don't have to uh, worry about getting penalized for premature approximation. Divide by 10, cos 45 plus Eight, be careful of the brackets, eight cos 30. So this is what we have. Also make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Just reset your calculator basically. Take tan inverse of the answer. So we're looking at 12.37, which means 12.4 degrees. Now remember, we're not gonna leave it at 12.4. We will say whether it's above or below the horizontal. So the final answer will be 14.3 Newtons and 12.4 degrees above the horizontal. So there you go. That's that. That's method one. Now, method one is, it's neat, OK? You get to see what's going on. And um, it's very systematic. And this is, if you stick to, if you at the end decide to stick to this method, now there are a few limitations to this method. You, It's better used when you have only two forces, OK? But uh, whatever method you decide to stick to, just make sure that you do it step by step, okay? So that you don't get lost in your own working. Now, let's move over to method number two, which is the parallelogram rule. Now, if you're a physics student, chances are you've heard of it. If you're not, then you may be doing it for the first time. But anyway, let's get straight into it. So basically, the reason why we call it a parallelogram rule is because we make a parallelogram out of it, okay? So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to redraw the two forces. So here is Q. Again, not drawn to scale, OK? You might have done this by accurate drawing, but that's not what we're going to do here. So here is the P Newton force. Here is the Q Newton force. In fact, instead of calling them P and Q, 
I'll write down their, their actual values, which are 10 and 8, respectively. And remember, the angle in between them is, uh, sorry, the angles are 45 and 30. So here's 45, here's 30. Make a mental note that in between, that's 75 degrees, 45 plus 30. So the reason, like I said, the reason why we call it a parallelogram rule is because we make a parallelogram out of it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this and bring it over here. OK, you can see that step by step, we're making a parallelogram. And just like that, I'm going to copy this. And you guessed it probably, paste it here. OK, so that means now we have this as 10 and this as 8. Now the resultant is basically the line that is passing through the center, not through the center, but through the starting point to the end. So basically the diagonal is the resultant, okay? So this right here, what I've drawn in blue is the resultant. Now the question is, how will we find out this value? Okay, so like I said, make a mental note that this is 75 degrees. That means using parallelogram rule, this will be the supplementary angle of 75, which means 180 minus 75, which is 105. Now, focus here. What does this remind you of? We have a triangle where you have two sides and the angle in between. What rule are we going to use in order to find out the missing length, the third length? I'm hoping you're saying cosine rule. So if that's what you're saying, you're absolutely correct. So r squared is equals to 8 squared plus 10 square minus 2 into 8 into 10 into cos of 105, OK? So there you go. Let's take the square root of it. If you do everything correctly, you will get the exact same answer as before. So 8 square plus 10 square minus 2 into 8 into 10 into cos of uh, 105. So we're looking at, yep, 14 point three newtons, so exactly the same answer. Now the question is, how exactly are we going to find out the angle? Now if you pay attention, the angle that we want over here is actually this angle right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is, we are going to make a 90 degree triangle, or may, if not a 90 degree triangle, then there's something else we're going to do, which I'll talk about shortly. Now the next thing we want is the angle, okay, which is what we're going to use to give the direction. Now, finding the angle over here can be slightly tricky. So here's what I would suggest. What I would suggest is that you extend this line and form a complete triangle right here, okay? Now, the angle the resultant is acting with the horizontal is theta, okay? Now, we will consider the exact same triangle except this angle is going to be 30 plus alpha, 30 plus theta, which I'm going to refer to as alpha, okay? Just so that it's easier finding the angle, okay? Now we're using the same triangle, and this time we have the value of r, which is equal to 14.3. Now bear in mind, I will not use exactly 14.3. I will use a slightly rounded off, I will use the exact value, okay? Now, notice over here, we have two angles and we have two lengths, okay? So what? In fact, we have one angle and we have two non-included lengths. So that means what I can use is I can use sine rule to find out this angle. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Sine of alpha upon, now what is the length opposite to the angle that we're using? That's 10 is equals to sine of 105 over the resultant force, which is 14.3. But remember, I am using the exact value. I'm not using the rounded off value because you don't want there to be, you don't want to have even a 0.1 deviation between your answer and the actual answer, okay? So sine 105 divided by the answer, okay? So I'm looking at a certain value, which is 0 0.067 into 10. And then when you take the sine inverse of the answer, you get alpha, which is equal to 42.37 degrees. Now this is not the final answer because the direction that we need to give the angle above the horizontal is just this small angle, which is theta. So how will we find theta? We'll take 42.37 and from it, we'll subtract 30. So the final answer, because it's an angle, we will give it correct to one decimal place. That's 12.4 above the horizontal. 
and there you go that's the answer now when you're giving the final answer just make sure to write down the resultant as well which is 14.3 uh, newtons and angle is 12.4 above the horizontal so there you go here are the two methods one was resolving forces and the other is parallelogram rule now my answer is that you probably found parallelogram rule easier than resolving it but again i could be wrong this is all subjective but do let me know in the comment section which method you found easier so that's it that's it for this video in the next video we'll be solving past paper questions which we don't have many of uh, this this category where you have two forces and then the video after that we will move to more complex questions where we'll be dealing with category two questions that is when you have three forces and they may or may not be in equilibrium we'll look into that so yeah that's it that's it for this video i will see you in the next one until then take care bye bye